Globally, there are one and a half billion adults who are either overweight or obese, a number expected to increase to 3 billion by 2030. The epidemic is reaching catastrophic proportions, and one of the key steps to bring it under control is to have a common language to describe the problem. Today, I want to debunk some of the obesity myths. Myths people use to justify their overeating. The first myth – I eat very little and still gain weight. The causes of obesity are as varied as the people it affects. At its most basic, of course, obesity results when someone regularly takes in more calories they need it. The body stores these excess calories as body fat, and over time the extra pounds add up. Eat fewer calories, then the body burns, weight goes down. People get fat because they eat more than people who are lean. Moreover, they eat often in the evening, at night, before going to bed and eat much more during food break. But the problem is that people tend to substantially underestimate their food intake. An important trait of obese people is that they continue to eat after they are gorged on. And all these facts are suitable for children. The children who are ate more, weight more. The second myth – I am obese because I move a little. While vigorous exercise can help keep a healthy weight, many studies show a link between physical activity and weight is not always present. Research by Ibrizol has demonstrated that principally food intake, not energy expenditure, is the main factor in weight gain. However, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't widen your physical activity. Besides eating a healthy diet, nothing is more important to keeping weight in check and staying healthy than regular activity. If there ever were a magic bullet for good health, physical activity would be it. How much activity is recommended depends on whether you are a child or an adult and what your goals are – good health or weight control. There are a lot of ways to get moving. Choose activities you enjoy. In addition to staying active, it's important for all age groups to minimize sit time, sedentary time, especially time watching television and eating. The last myth for today – everybody in our family is fat, it's genetics. Despite the fact that scientists have succeeded in performing several genetic and biochemical defects leading to obesity, they are rare and could be manifested only in the presence of palatable foods. Stankart had shown whether the parents were obese or not, the degree of weight gain in children was determined by food intake. Heredity plays a role in obesity, but generally to a much lesser degree than many people might believe. Rather than being obesity's sole cause, genes seem to increase the risk of weight gain and interact with other risk factors in the environment, such as unhealthy diets and inactive lifestyles. And healthy lifestyles can counteract these genetic effects. Of course, a person might have some health conditions that contribute to weight gain, such as endocrine disorders, psychogenic overeating, brain diseases, hormonal treatment, etc. However, in the vast majority of cases, the most obvious explanation turns out to be the most correct. Our weight depends on how much we eat, and the more we eat, the more we want to eat. So why do most people constantly want to eat? In the next videos, I will analyze why do we gain weight, what food manufacturers are hiding from us and why diets don't work. Write your thoughts about that below this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to check my Instagram page. Take care of your body and mind. See you!